In problem number 54 of section 3.2, we're asked to show that if we have two continuous functions on a closed and bounded interval a, b, that the area enclosed by f and the x-axis is less than or equal to the area between f and, f and h plus the area between h and the x-axis. So in other words, what we want to show, so this isn't true yet, so I'll put uh, WTS for want to show, uh, that the integral from a to b of now the area enclosed by f in the x-axis, uh, so the area of f is less than or equal to, um, so say dx, so the integral of the absolute value of f of x dx is less than or equal to the area between f and h, which is the integral from a to b. Uh, of the absolute value of f of x minus h of x uh, plus the area between h and the x-axis. So rather than writing this as two integrals, I'll just use linearity and write plus the absolute value of h of x dx. All right, so there's really just several cases that we need to look at. Um, the first case is easy case if we have um, if we have f is greater than h greater than 0 so in other words we want to show that the area from the x axis to f is less than or equal to the area from the x axis to h plus the area from h to f and in this case will actually be strict equality this is, um, if we look at the right-hand side now, so the integral of f plus the, or integral of the difference, so integral of the absolute value of um, f minus h plus the absolute value of h um, dx. Well, in this case, f, of x, f minus h is positive. And uh, h is positive. So we can just get rid of the absolute value signs. And we see that we're just integrating from a to b the function uh, f minus h plus h, which of course is just equal to the integral from a to b of f. But since f is positive, that's the same thing as um, the absolute value of f. So see that it holds in this case. Now, before we move on to a different case, or we will move on to a different case, we'll go to a specific one. We say that if we just take the negative of f and h and then just rename f to be negative f and h to be negative h, then we're really looking at the case um, when looking at this case here. So let's call this case two um, now. If we just take the negative of everything, we just end up with zero is um, greater than h is greater than f. And now we can just kind of adjust the exact the equation that we already had. So here we have looking at the difference between f and h. Well, f minus h um, in this case will be negative. So we'll be looking at the absolute value of it. So, so for case two, we'll have the integral from a to b of h minus f. Uh, and that's just the absolute value of f minus h. We have to throw in a minus sign since we, um, so we Took a minus sign here. And then we'll add the absolute value of h. But h is negative, so the absolute value of h is actually negative h. So now we have the integral from a to b of h minus h uh, minus f. So this is the integral from a to b of minus f dx 
remember now f is negative. So since f is uh, negative, negative f is equal to the absolute value. And we see that it holds in this case, in these two cases. All right, so the third and fourth possibilities that we would have for f and h are, well, we could have f somewhere up above the x-axis and f somewhere below the x-axis. And in this case, we'll have the integral from a to b of f minus h plus absolute value of h. Well, in this case, f minus h will be positive. So the absolute value, we can just keep it the same. This is just the integral of f minus h. Now, h is negative, so this will be uh, equal to negative h. All right, well, this is uh, the integral from a to b of f minus 2h. But now, remember that h is negative, so negative 2h is actually going to be positive. And, of course, f is positive. So this whole thing is less than or equal to the integral of just f. Since we're taking the integral of the sum of two functions which are positive uh, on the interval a, b. If we break that up, then we have two positive integrals. So really, we're just taking away the integral of one of those functions. And of course, um, I should say it's not less than or equal to. That's greater than or equal to. Uh, so see that. And of course, now f is, again, positive. So we can throw in the absolute value sign. And we end up with. Um, showing that the quality is true in case three. Okay, and again, we kind of have the reverse of this. Well, if what if h is greater and f is less than? And again, we're really not changing a whole lot. So now we have. Um, h is greater than 0, which is greater than f. So this is the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f minus h plus the absolute value of h. And now let's look at f minus h. Um, f is negative, and we're subtracting a negative, so this whole thing is going to be negative. The absolute value will be uh, negative, will be h minus f. And since h is positive, we'll keep, uh, keep that as h. The absolute value of positive h is just h. And this is equal to the integral from a to b of 2h minus f. You can see that this is really just the same case that we had before in case three, only now uh, the roles of, or the signs of H and F are switched, but you know, that's actually fine because we switched the signs in the beginning, so the outcome is going to be exactly the same. So this is positive, negative F is also positive since F is negative to begin with. So if we take away 2h and just look at the integral of negative f. Uh, we see that this is going to be less than, or that this will be uh, greater than, hang on. No, sorry, this will be less than or equal to what we had before. And of course, since f is negative, uh, we look at, um, since f is negative, negative. Um, f is going to be the same as the absolute value of f. All right, so two cases left. Um, let's see. So 
So we already looked at kind of similar, um, similar cases to these last two. We looked at if um, f was, if h was kind of between the x-axis and f. Now let's look at what happens if f is between h and the x-axis. So we'll look at this and then the negative of this, which would be f is uh, zero less than, or zero greater than f greater than h. So uh, the next case, or case five, is when uh, h is greater than f. So we saw kind of the opposite case if f was greater than h. Uh, so we'll look at this case, h greater than f uh, greater than zero. And then also the case where we kind of reflect this over the x-axis. Uh, so again, we look at the integral from a to b of the difference, absolute value of the difference of the two functions plus um, absolute value of h. And let's see, f minus h in this case will be negative. So the absolute value will be equal to h minus f uh, plus h, but, or plus the absolute value of h, but h is positive. So this will be um, plus h. Now this is 2h minus f uh, dx, and let's see. So here we're going to use the fact that h is greater than or equal to f. So if we uh, replace h with f, well then we'll re be replacing with a smaller function, so we know that uh, the integral will be greater than or equal to, this integral will be greater than or equal to um, the integral of 2f minus f dx, which is just equal to the integral of f dx. And since f is positive, uh, this is the same as the integral of the absolute value. So the integral, or the inequality holds for the fifth case, and fortunately we only have one remaining case left. So here if we reflect everything around the x-axis, we get um, uh, 0 is greater than f is greater than h. And here the analysis is essentially the same. Again, we look at the sign of f minus h. We see that, well, that's going to be positive. So this is uh, f minus h. And h is negative. So here we take um, negative h. We see that this is the integral of f minus 2h. And here we have to use a little bit of a different trick. Uh, we know that since f is greater than h, we know, uh, let's see. Right, so f is greater than h, which implies that negative 2f is less than negative 2h, since we switch the inequalities when we integrate, or I mean switch the inequality when we multiply by a negative sign. So if we, replace negative 2h with negative 2f. We're replacing it with something smaller. So this, uh, this equality becomes uh, greater than or equal to. And we're left with the integral from a to b of f minus 2f, or just negative f. And this is equal to the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f since uh, we're assuming that f is negative.
So this covers all the cases, but you may have wondered, well, what if f isn't greater than h or h isn't greater than f on the entire interval a, b? Well, I mean, if that's the case, then um, so if we had something, say, like this, well, then we could just break it up onto the pieces where it was true. Um, so just break it up into the pieces where f was greater than h. If a, a, f, if f and h happen to agree on some region or some interval, then the formula is kind of trivial because if we just get strict equality, this goes to zero. Uh, we just end up with the integral of the absolute value of f of x is equal to the integral of the absolute value of h of x since they would be equal on some interval. So we can assume that we can just look at the points or the intervals where they do differ, and one is strictly greater than the other, and then just apply you know. Each of those intervals will be one of these six cases. And since we know that it's true on each of those intervals, well, it's going to be true on the entire thing.